just wanted to ask you two or three questions, and we're going to use this, you know, to put on our website mm -hmm. and all of that. Um, the first is, what is, what are the greatest challenges, perhaps the three greatest challenges facing Mexico today? I'd say one is to get the economy growing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are a country that has muddled through for the past 20 years, exper ex experimenting with various forms uh, of, of reform that have gone through neoliberalism, the Washington consensus, backtracking, uh, and the result has been not a good one. This is a country that has grown on average 1% over the past 20 years. Mm -hmm in contrast with the rest of Latin America that over the past five years did very well up until the onset of the crisis. So I think that is a, 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 a short-term challenge for Mexico, is, is to develop an economic model that works in terms of its capacity to, uh, to promote accelerated growth. Mm -hmm. And growth with equity, because one of the things that, that, uh, that has become, I think, quite dire for Mexico is um, the polarization. Uh, as a result of extreme concentration of income. And uh, it, it, the crisis has, has, has had a, 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 a perverse impact on the poor. I mean, the numbers in terms of the growth of poverty in Mexico for the past year, I, I think, are quite dramatic. So I'd say um, growth with equity is a clear challenge. The other would be um, fixing our dysfunctional democracy. And why is it dysfunctional? I think many people assume that when Vicente Fox won the presidency in the year 2000 and the PRI was kicked out of Los Pinos, that mm -hmm. somehow Mexico had become a functional democracy. And in some senses we did in terms of competition among parties, different ideological choices, relatively clean elections, but it is a democracy that is lacking some basic elements such as representation, which is virtually non-existent in a system that doesn't have legislative re-election or re-election for any position, and lacking, sorely la lacking in accountability because of those, 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 the absence of institutional links between the governed and government. Mm -hmm. uh, it is still very much um, a system of elite rotation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the third challenge, I think, would, would be to figure out exactly whether we're going to be a Latin American or a North American country. Mm -hmm. I think Mexico, uh, under Carlos Salinas and with the advent of NAFTA, steps were taken in the direction of North American integration. But now, what is it, um, almost 16 years after NAFTA, uh, I think we have to um, you know, make strategic decisions in terms of our integration with the US. Um, our relationship has al always been ambivalent. It has been contested. And uh, I, th I think the crisis over the past year has revealed to what extent we are so intricately involved with the United States, and yet at the same time have not managed to iron out some of our basic differences or set clear-cut avenues or terms of collaboration on bilateral issues such as drug trafficking. I mean. Um, if I could add a fourth challenge for Mexico, I, I, I frequently hear people say, oh, you know, we just need to reestablish the rule of law as if it had ever existed. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I think um, the rule of law has always been a rhetorical aspiration in Mexico. It, it, it is intermittent or virtually non-existent for the poor who cannot pay, um, who have no legal recourse, who are constantly abused by a judicial system that works very well works very well for its elites and works very poorly for its average citizen. Um, m my Canadian husband, uh, who, who, who has the privileged vantage point of, of coming from a well-governed country, frequently says that Mexico is not a country of citizens, it's a country of interests. So um, m my final thought would be, that's the challenge for Mexico. How do we turn, you know, this, this, this I I in many ways, you know, oligopolistic, highly concentrated, unequal, um, country of vested interests into a place that actually works for its citizens. Mm -hmm. You brought up the issue of a non-functioning democracy. Are Mexicans disenchanted with democracy? And are they, is there a real chance that they would put the PRI back in Los Pinos in 2012? Mm -hmm. 
Um, the latest Latino Barometro poll that measures the attitudes of Latin Americans vis-a-vis -vis democracy places Mexico I in a very uncomfortable spot. I mean, only 4% of Mexicans believe or trust in political parties. Only 10% believe that their legislators actually legislate in their favor. On every major index uh, in terms of evaluating democracy, Mexicans are disillusioned. And I think um, in, in some ways expectations were too high and uh, democracy has not brought what Mexicans thought it would. But in many ways, it's not democracy's fault. There are decisions, particularly economic policy decisions, that two Panista presidents should have made and have not carried out. And as a result, because of sluggish growth and because of the rise in violence, I think people begin to look back with a certain nostalgia, a misplaced um, a, a nostalgia for, for a, a better time. But uh, I think it's a dangerous path for Mexico because if the PRI returns in a 2012 election, it will have done so without having reformed itself. Mm -hmm. um, and it will bring back some of the worst traits and some of the worst corporatist alliances and some of the worst um, practices of crony capitalism that have, ha that have hampered Mexico in the democratic era. And I think the PRI will do everything in its power to dismantle the few counterweights and autonomous institutions that we've been able to build so that they are, n it, it becomes very difficult for, to remove them from power ever again. Mm -hmm. And that, that I think that is a big concern. Did President Felipe Calderon err in launching a frontal attack on the drug cartels operating in Mexico? And has that focus on the drug cartels drawn his focus and the government's focus away from the economy? I think he had no choice. I think um, the situation he inherited, in, in which drug cartels had penetrated, infiltrated many of the key areas of, this, uh, of the state apparatus and also gained territorial control uh, of certain areas, and also Cartels, and I, I think this was the main reason for, for launching the war that he did. Cartels had begun to move into other areas of organized crime, such as kidnappings and extortion and so on. Um, so I, I, I think Calderon arrived in a situation where his back was against the wall, and he had to strengthen the state so as to be able to govern effectively. And I think he also undertook this crusade for political reasons. He needed to establish himself mm -hmm. uh, in the context of a very contested election uh, in the aftermath of, of, of that very polarizing experience in, in which his own legitimacy was questioned. He wanted to exude the authority that only a commander in chief at the helm of the Mexican army could, could exude. So I think it, it was a combination of those circumstances. But what did he discover? That he had gone off into a war and probably didn't have enough of an army mm -hmm. to fight it with effectively. And I'm not referring exclusively to the Mexican army, but he didn't have the appropriate weapons. And I think it's been a war that has been fought um, with too much focus on the military aspect of it and not enough focus on institutional cleanup, on reforming the police, on reforming the judiciary. Because what happens? I mean, drug cartels are dismantled or capos are captured, another one emerges, they go into a jail, they escape, they run their drug trafficking organizations from there. I mean, it, it, the problem with Mexico is, is it's, you know, it's the, culture, the culture of impunity. You know, 97% of crimes are never solved. So uh, drug trafficking is simply symptomatic of a, of a deeper problem. And I think it has sapped, it sapped the president's energy. It distracted him during the first three years. And I think the, the dire um, loss that his party suffered in, in the midterm election um, this past July proved to him that that was the case, that people weren't focused obsessively on the war on drugs, that it gave him popularity, but that didn't translate into support for his party because pocketbook issues dominated the election. And he had not placed, and has not to date, placed enough emphasis on the sorts of structural and institutional reforms geared towards uh, making the Mexican economy grow. I, I don't think that has been a priority of his administration, and I think it should have, and now he is paying the, the, the price of, of his focus exclusively or largely on the war on drugs. Excellent. Thank you very much.